faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's And welcome to Super Women Live at 21 minutes to midnight on this Sunday night, 9.49.11.16. If you'd like to get involved, you can SMS to 0433 98.11.16. In a moment, Melbourne Vixens coach Julie Hornwig to join us from New Zealand. Sherelle McMahon, one of the greatest players of all time, will be a special guest as well. And also Cathy Fellows, coach of the Vic Fury, to talk about the squad that was announced over the last week, the next generation of players coming through. There are a few Vixens on that list as well, but Super Women Live is, of course, the official show of the Melbourne Vixens and Netball Victoria in this week's edition. Proudly presented by the Melbourne Vixens' premier partner, that is, of course, Jason Betting, helping the Melbourne Vixens rest and recover. They're in action tomorrow night against the Central Pulse in Wellington. Plenty of fans uh, won the opportunity to travel with the team. They had a team at dinner last night, and it was there that we caught up with Julie Hornweg. Time now on Super Women Live to be joined uh, by the coach, the brains behind the side. Of course, Julie Hornweg. We're a couple of games away from a finals campaign and the one last box that needs to be ticked to ensure a place in the finals is a win in these last two games in New Zealand against the Pulse and the Steel. Of course, winning both of them gives the opportunity to host a final and set up a real assault on the premiership for season 2012. Julie, thank you very much for your time. Oh, my pleasure. Now, uh, looking at the... Heading across the, uh, the the Tasman for the for the last couple of games, Pulse and then Steel. We know uh, the Central Pulse have been a much improved side this season, and the Southern Steel, whilst they may only have two wins, have been highly competitive in most of their games, and particularly when they play at Invercargill, are hard to beat. But looking at it, first of all, a uh, good good lead into the finals. Do you think to to have these two tough road trips? Do I guess uh, Steel the side before hopefully coming home for, for what we hope is a home final? Yeah, that's uh, certainly a great opportunity for us to get back on the road and spend some quality time with each other away from the netball courts as well as on the courts and we've got a captive audience for a few days so we can really get stuck into some some uh, rehab and some physio and just uh, make sure everyone's um, 100% ready for finals but yeah, we've got two very tough matches um, Pulse as you said are a great team this year and are playing some really great netball and um, Steel in Invercargill are a tough opponent so yeah they're two good tests for us you probably know quite a bit, obviously, about Caitlin Thwaites as a, as a former Vixen, but she's having a, a fantastic season and they've recruited very well. They've, they've sort of strengthened up their defence. What have you, I guess, noticed uh, about the Pulse that's seen them? They've won five games this season. They're just going to miss out on the finals, but certainly from where they've been in the last couple of years as perhaps the other poorest performed of the New Zealand sides, it's been a, a decent old rise for them. Yeah, and they're very consistent across four quarters of netball. Um, once upon a time, you might have got uh, a performance out for a quarter or two, but uh, these days it's uh, four quarters uh, of really good, pressured netball. And they're defensively, they're very strong with Grant and um, Selby Ricketts. Um, uh, Lees has been playing very well in the midcourt, and now Henry sort of moved in there. So she's a very unusual, a very different style of centre, so that tests you out. And then you've got uh, Griffin and... Um, Twaits at the front, so yeah, they're a fairly even team across the across the whole court, and uh, they play four quarters of netball. Now, looking at obviously heading across there, we've been plugging it a couple of times, but a lot of the Vixens fans have, have made the trek across there, and as we speak to you, I think you're at a uh, at a dinner with with some of the supporters that have come across. So there's going to be a, a nice level of uh, of Melbourne support uh, in the crowd in Wellington as well. Well, there'll be some. I don't think it'll be anywhere near the, <laughs> the, the local support, but it'll be nice to have, because last time we were here two years ago, there was pretty much silence every time we got the ball. So there'll be some level of support, But so that's great. And, uh, yeah, we've just been spending some time with our supporters just then, so it was great. Do you, uh, when, when you look at the side, obviously, there's been a lot of depth and a lot of players have, have come in off the bench and been used over the course of the season. Do you look at your side and think in your own mind you've got what you would classify as a best starting seven, or is that sort of undefined in the sense it depends who you play, depends on matchups, you've got that versatility, or do you think in your own head that if you, uh, if you had to one day, you had a best, a best starting seven? 
uh, you, you're right. The, these days, with the, with the different styles and the different um, strategies that the teams play, you've got to look at uh, each team and work out what's the best um, lineup that you can put on the court to match with them, but without tampering with yours too much. I think you, sometimes you can change your best lineup or one or two lineups and make something that's a bit foreign to your own team. So we'll try and stick with the lineup that we've put on the court before, but also look at matchups. Impact of the younger players must have impressed you a lot this year. We've seen Stanaway and, and Wilson get court time. Ashley Howard, who's uh, been much travelled, had injury concerns over the journey, get uh, get her opportunity. We know the development of, of Caldwell continues to impress as well. So from, from a coach's point of view, you've been able to call on, on young players and, and, and get the results you were looking for out of them. Oh, yeah, that, that's been fantastic. Um, Ashley Howell got her first chance last week in a, in a crucial match mm. and came on for a quarter and was a real impact player. So uh, probably for our young ones, we look for them to make an impact in the game. They're playing four quarters is be, not beyond them, but they're, they're building towards that with their quality training against the likes of Bianca Chadfield and Julie Coletto and Jeeva Mentor. So for our young goalers to get an opportunity to train against the likes of that week in, week out, uh, is fantastic, and so we look for them to make an impact. Um, and so far, they've done that tremendously well. We've yeah. asked a, a couple of the girls uh, this question over the course of the season, but this year there, there appears to have been some, I guess, problem matchups for for every side. For example. Uh, Whilst the Adelaide Thunderbirds have won a lot of games, when they've played the Melbourne Vixens, they've been beaten convincingly on, on both occasions. The Vixens have lost to the Swifts a couple of times. The Swifts <laughs> lose to Adelaide by about 20 goals every time they play them. It seems a, a strange one with matchups that, for whatever reason, there are certain sides that have a hold over others. And I guess that makes it important which way the cards fall in the finals. Oh, it's just the body types and the styles of game they play and the way the ball is delivered. And yes, some of them bring it in hard and fast and that suits some sort of defensive strategies. Others like it a little bit longer so they can reposition and uh, and they like it direct through court or they like to delay. So yeah, there's lots of strategies out there. And as you say, there's been some really interesting matchups this year. <laughs> and you know, like last week, uh, Swift had an outstanding game against... Yeah. Um, no, sorry, had a terrible get, game against Thunderbirds, yeah. and Thunderbirds have almost looked invincible, and then this week they came out and lost the Magic, so really hard to predict this season. Speaking of the Magic, just a couple before we let you go, obviously the Vixens sort of fired the Magic up a little bit, beating them by a point in that game. The Magic haven't <laughs> lost since, and they now look likely to play finals, and I guess a uh, bit of a dangerous uh, floater coming into the finals, given they've spent most of the year outside the top four, but now having won, I think, eight games in a row, they're uh, a lot of finals experience, so they loom as a dangerous dangerous threat as well. Yeah, and they're playing the, their best netball at the right time of the season. So, yes, they did have a slow start. But, yeah, as you say, they've been playing some really good netball and um, the defenders have really um, cemented their their link and their communication and are playing really well. And Irene had an amazing game last uh, this week or last week. We've really lost the days since we've been <laughs> here, but uh, she played brilliantly. So, yeah, they seem to be coming good at the right time time of, of the year. Absolutely, 40 years of age and, and still going yes. strong and just a, a couple on the uh, on the Vixens as we do lead in towards the finals. Uh, fr- from your point of view I guess you, you talk about playing uh, your best netball at the right time of year, obviously winning the first six and then hit a bit of a snag, losing a few but a couple of wins now starting to get some momentum happening so do you feel you're in that position now where obviously the fast start set up the season for you but now you're starting to get back to that level of netball that you think is going to hold you in good stead for the finals? Oh. We're not quite there yet, and we'll need to be playing better netball than we are right now if we we have aspirations to winning the tournament. But we've been building the last couple of weeks, so that's the pleasing part. And, um, yeah, we get it all right towards the end of the season. Um, we'll be hard to beat. Absolutely. Julie, thank you for your time. Uh, as always, best of luck for the game against the Central Pulse and then regroup for, uh, for the Southern Steel as well and hopefully knock both of them over, set up a home final, and then we can, uh, we can cheer, uh, cheer the girls on again with the record crowds at High Sense Arena. Thank you very much, Darren. Julie Hornweg, coach of the Vixens, joining us there. Now, the Melbourne Vixens MVP Awards coming up soon. Join the Vixens to celebrate the 2012 season at the MVP Awards night, Friday the 27th of July. It's at the Showtime Events Centre at South Wharf. Enjoy a night with the Superwomen. Dine on delicious food. It'll be the first to hear the announcement of the Vixens Awards and the coveted 2012 MVP. Go to melbournevixens.com.au if you are to book a ticket. 
Joining us now on Super Women Live is the coach of the Vic Fury, which represents the next generation of Super Women, the next generation of Melbourne Vixens, and hopefully going beyond that Australian superstars. Cathy Fellows is the coach of that side. It all gets underway in the early part of August uh, for the the season 2012. Uh, Cathy, thank you very much for joining us. That's right. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, obviously, we've had the squad announced uh, eight or so days ago. We're obviously, a couple of the uh, the Melbourne Vixens girls that we've seen uh, get some exposure over the course of the season, like uh, Wilson and, and these sorts of players. Uh, Casey Stanaway, who's had a little bit of court time, Ash Howard as well. So it uh, goes to show, I guess, uh, with, with these opportunities presented, that uh, players do have the uh, the higher honours that, that aren't necessarily all that far away. Exactly. It's um, it's part of that pathway for the ANZ competition. We've obviously got a goal to win the competition, but one of the other goals of what we do here in Victoria is to prepare our players to be ready for ANZ competition. And if you see someone like a Karen Howard this year, she played with us yep. last year at Fury, was outstanding and got her opportunity at ANZ this year and she stepped up big time. So that's part of what we do. We want to win and then also <laughs> prepare those players. And looking through uh, the, the list of players in the, in the 2012 squad, there's a, a lot of players around that we've seen. Shannon Egg- Eglin, uh, who's been yep. playing with the Queensland Firebirds. Kathleen Knott was a, Kathleen Knott was a Vixen last Last year as well, so uh, yeah, there's, there's a fair bit of experience. Cara Richards and these sorts of players in there too. So uh, putting a, putting a pretty decent list together. Yeah, look, we're really happy with the list. It's sort of a, a pretty good blend of experience with those mm-hmm. players that you've named, and also we've got the opportunity to give. Um, exposure to the next tier of players that are so we've got a number that are 17, 18 through to 21. So we've got six or seven that are in the under 21 competition, and also in sort of Australian contention for 19 and under. So we see it as a really good mix, and it actually works really well to have the experienced players with the young players. It thinks it brings their development. Um, on just that little bit quicker, having the experience with them. So, yes, we think we've got a good mix at this stage. And it also shows, I guess, that the talent spread within Australia. You've got players uh, from Victoria and other states sort of moving states and for opportunities and these sorts of things. And obviously players in this Vic Fury squad that have played for Queensland and, and other states and, and these sorts of things as well. So uh, in terms of a pathway, it's also a nice endorsement, I guess, that Australia is on the right track with that, that young talent coming through. I'm not sure how they do it in, in say, New Zealand, our biggest rival, yeah. but a nice pathway. And I think um, we've got to sort of take some pride in Victoria that we're doing it right. We've got um, players in every other state um, and they come straight from Vic Fury. We've had, well, Shannon, obviously, Alyssa McLeod came from Fury to be at Queensland as well. Adelaide um, have got a number of Victorian players and obviously um, WA we had there as well. We've got Ash Howard who's come back from WA. We've got Shannon coming back from Queensland and Cara coming back from South Australia. So it's good to know that their heart is really in Victoria and they take the opportunities in other states they do come back to us. Absolutely. And just to, I guess, a, a couple, but before we let you go, we mentioned obviously a lot of it's development and these sorts of things, but when uh, entering competitions, there's obviously expectations and, and aspirations of success. How are you feeling, I guess, about the uh, about the prospects entering into the season? Strong squad, as we know, but uh, how are you feeling, uh, I guess, about the, uh, the group's chances here? Uh, look, our expectation is to win the competition. Yep. Like, this is the fifth year of the competition, yep. and... Uh, we've won three out of four. Last year we didn't, so mm-hmm. our expectation is to um, regroup and take that next step again this year. And I think I know that we've got the squad to do that this year. Who are uh, who are I guess some of the uh, the major rivals when, when we look at the uh, the competition? Obviously, there's there's squads based out of the AIS in Canberra and these sorts of things. But who are the major threats? Um, AIS have been very competitive when they well they weren't in there last year, but they've been yep. very competitive. We played them twice in the grand final. Um, and New South Wales Waratahs have been very strong, but they've lost a number of players this year that have they of their seven last year that played us in the grand final, all of them got A and Z contracts and a number of them are now ineligible to play A and L because of their court time this yep. year. So I still expect them to be very strong because there's great depth in New South Wales. And I think um probably Queensland because it just happens in Queensland not many locals play <laughs> there um as for the Firebirds, so yep. therefore we're almost playing the Queensland top team at <laughs> NL level. So yes, it's a different different competition for them. Now, uh, just finally, we've mentioned a lot of the experienced players that we've seen play ANZ Championship, but a couple of the younger players that we should keep a, uh, a close eye on. We, we caught up with Kate Maloney a few weeks yeah. ago, uh, but uh, maybe some of these names that we might not have heard of that we should keep a very close eye on. Well, certainly Kate's one to look um, out for. We've got a number of the players that are playing for Fury this year that are in the national yep. 19 and under and 21 squads, and they include Kelsey Brown, Maddie's sister, who was outstanding okay. last year at ANL. Um, she's in the 21 under squad. Um, Sarah Main, um, Maggie Lind, 
They're also in the 19 squads with Kate. And I hope I haven't missed anyone. There's a number of young players. And obviously, Michaela Wilson's still not um, very young, but she's playing at ANZ level. So um, it's good for her to come and play within her own age group as well. It is indeed. Cathy, thank you very much. Good luck for that. Uh, very nice squad assembled. And uh, hopefully we can uh, continue on with the wonderful work developing the next generation of superstars. That's the plan. Time to be joined on Super Women Live by one of the all-time greats, uh, obviously a favourite of ours here at eleven sixteen. SEN, Sherelle McMahon does join us. Sherelle, nice to be speaking to you again. Thank you. You too. Now, uh, a couple of games away from the finals campaign. Mathematically, they still need to probably win one more game, the Vixens, to, to seal their place. If they win both of their games, they're likely to... Uh, to host a final, which is obviously extremely significant. They find themselves on the road for the last two against the, the much-improved Central Pulse and Southern Steel are always very difficult to uh, to beat. But good opportunity for the girls uh, away from home to obviously uh, just solidify their position. It's in their hands. that They're still controlling their own destiny and then hopefully come back to Melbourne and stay there for the uh, for what we hope is back-to-back home finals. Well, that would be very nice, wouldn't it? They've, as you say, they've got the... Um, they headed over this morning for the... Uh, match against the Pulse tomorrow night. So um, that will be a really tough game for them. The Pulse have been probably the best improvers Mm. of the season, really, compared to the um, past season. So um, they're they're doing some really great things. So certainly a tough one on the road, first of all. And as you said, these games... um, are all crucial for for the Vixens and for everyone else in the competition. We've already seen some interesting results in this round. And so, you know, the people who are vying for a finals position are all actually standing up at the moment and uh, giving it a real push. So um, it'll be, it'll really be the teams that, that hold their nerve and, and secure the wins when they need to. Of course, Queensland play the magic uh, next week. It's probably a case of one of those sides making it and the other one doesn't. A uh, couple of things as, as we look towards it. Where do you see the Vixens' chances right now? We, we spoke to, to Julie Hornweg and she suggested that they're getting back towards their best but obviously haven't arrived yet. They, they had to fight really hard to beat the Fever last week and that remains a strength, their ability to, to grind out these wins when perhaps they're not at their best. But after such a fast start to the season, how far away do you think they are from being at their best? And if they were to enter the finals tomorrow, how would you uh, how would you rate their chances, I guess, trying to step back and look at the list? I, I would still rate their chances really highly and that's largely based on their ability to fight back and... You know, in a final series, it doesn't matter how you win. Yep. Um, it just matters whether you win. And the, the girls have really shown that they have just such an amazing fighting quality within them, which is great. Um, but I'm sure that uh, they would also tell you that they're not playing at their best and they would like to be putting out some better netball um, than they are. So th- there's certainly uh, some improvement there to happen. Uh, and I kind of get the sneaking suspicion that they're not going to be able to let themselves mm. into the positions that they have yep. in past weeks and um, get back. I just I can't see these quality teams in the final series kind of giving them enough opportunities mm-hmm. to, to fight back like some of the teams have through the years. So that's a challenge for them to, to not get in that position in the first place and really use that kind of intensity and that fight that we've seen in them, but use it across the four quarters. Absolutely. Now, after the the pulse, it is the the steel and... As I understand it, I think only one Australian side's won it at Invercargill, certainly over recent years. And a lot of people talk about the difficulty of playing games there. The crowd's obviously phenomenal. What What is it like, I guess, for, for visiting teams uh, entering that cauldron? Now, we know the Steel have only won a couple of games, but they've been competitive in most of them. And they obviously do, uh, do grow an inch or so when they play there. Yeah, well, you call it a cauldron, but it's more like an icebox. It is absolutely (laughs) freezing down there. And I think that's part of it too, kind of the environment you go Mm. down to with the weather and, um, you know, it's a small town and it's really cold and the the passion that the supporters have down there is something that you probably don't see anywhere else. They are um, just so into the netball and they do create an atmosphere where it is really tough to play in front of. So um, they have a huge home advantage, probably the biggest of any of, of the teams, really. So it, it's it's tough. As I said, you know, the, the girls are staying on the road for that week in between and um, it, it's these games are by no means, you know, we're not marking them down straight away. That They've still got some work to do. But um, if they put put some good netball out, they'll they'll secure those wins. I've had a 
close look at the pole stand and the steel, both of those teams. And, you know, I'm absolutely think we've got the talent to, to outplay them. It's just a matter of, of putting it out there, as I said, for mm-hmm. for the whole game rather than just in bits and pieces. Absolutely. Uh, speaking with Sherelle McMahon, just a, a couple of, of others as well. Now, I've asked a few of the girls about Ash Howard. Obviously, she was seen, I think, for a while, if I'm not mistaken, as a bit of an heir apparent to uh, to yourself during uh, or probably a couple of years ago that she then suffered a major knee injury, went over to Perth and has come back and got some court time the other day, which would have been fantastic to see. And how have you seen, I guess, her rejuvenation as a player after that nasty injury? Yeah, she did have that injury. And that is tough to come back from, obviously. A knee injury is, is really hard. And she uh, went over to Perth and tried her hand over there. And I guess, luckily for us, she's, <laughs> she's returned back to Victoria now. And look, she um, has obviously been waiting all season for her opportunity. And this is what I love about this competition, that and seeing these players come through. Um, who get their chance and just take it and run with it. And I think Ash is a beautiful example of that. She, um, you know, played less than a half the other week, but made such an impression. And through that third quarter, really created some amazing space with Karen. And, um, you know, largely during... The, it was that third... Well, it was that third quarter. It was the only quarter we won. Um, and, you know, a big part of that was Ash and her, her ability to, to open up the space and play really well. So... Um, she did a great job, and um, but then the beauty of it is, again, as we saw, Tegan comes on and a, a huge contrast to the way Ash plays, and it's tough for defenders to adjust to that. So that's a really great strength of this team, the uh, versatility and the ability to bring people on and off the bench. Absolutely, and Tegan Corbell's been outstanding this season, as, as we know, and, and yeah, I mean, so so quick uh, around uh, around the court as well. Speaking of quick around the court, I know uh, she does get a bit of attention, Maddie Brown, but I still think in, in a way she's been underrated. If you look at the statistical <laughs> aspect of a season in terms of centre pass receives, goal assists, she, she's leading those stats by an absolute mile, and you could mount a, a fair argument that she's been across the course of the season the best player in the league. Oh, I wouldn't uh, be upset if you'd said this. If you'd said <laughs> that, I think that that's not far off the mark. Um, certainly, the way she's kind of uh, marshalling the troops in that attack end with the Vixens, with you know a few inexperienced players there, I think she's doing a really fantastic job. Her um, her partnership and um, I guess combination with Chelsea Tregear. Uh, in in the attack end, I, I've really enjoyed watching. I think that they've done a great job with that. And as you say, she and she's not just leading mm. those stats. Uh, she is leading the yeah, <laughs> And um, to have someone who's as dominant in that, as that is is great. And no doubt, opposition teams will have seen that and are trying to shut her down, but they're just not able to. She's, um, she's just having an outstanding season. Now, from your, your own point of view, now, I know you're, you're well short of this mark, so don't take it the wrong way, but we saw <laughs> Irene Van Dyke turn 40 during the week, and she's in unbelievable form as she it is, stands yeah. at, at the moment, and, and the Magic are going to be a really dangerous side. Do you, do you look at something like that and, and suggest that, or someone like that in a situation like that, and, and use that even as, as inspiration for yourself down the track uh, if you are looking to come back? That obviously, you can you can play this game for, for a very, very, very long time, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I actually did an interview with a New Zealand radio station earlier in the week and mm. they asked me how long I think she can play for. And I said 80 <laughs> because I can't see her retiring anytime soon. She's just such a phenomenal athlete. And I think she's probably, you know, one in a million kind mm. of athlete who's obviously been able to keep herself incredibly fit and um, healthy in terms of injury and all that kind of thing. Um does she provide me inspiration? She probably has been doing that for mm. her entire career and my entire career. I've been lucky enough to kind of watch on the opposition, um, you know, her career and be amazed with what she's been able to do. And, yeah, look, for me, I guess it, it is, um, you know, it does give me a little bit of hope, I guess, that, that things can continue on. Obviously, we're very different athletes and mm-hmm. um, different situations and things. But, yeah, it's, it's great to see her still doing so well and, yeah, doing doing it for the old girls. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully the uh, the Vixens can salute in their next two uh, conquests in New Zealand, set themselves up in the best possible way for the finals. Sherelle, thank you for uh, for speaking to us as always. Always uh, very giving with your time. No problem. Thanks very much. Strong week.
<coughs> Excuse me. Sean McMahon there joining us on the program. Of course, the Melbourne Vixens MVP Awards is coming up on Friday, the 27th of July. You can join the girls to celebrate the 2012 season and hopefully a flag uh, at the Showtime Event Centre at South Wharf. Uh, enjoy a night with the Super Women. Dine on delicious food. You'll be the first to hear the announcement of the Vixens Awards and the coveted 2012 MVP. Go to melbournevixens.com. Dot .au to book your tickets. We'll take a break. Global Game Day up after this. Plenty of special guest, Alistair Lynch, recently inducted into the Brisbane Lions inaugural Hall of Fame as part of their dinner on Saturday night, as well as uh, for four of his premiership teammates, but also some of the greats of the Fitzroy Football Club. Going back many, many years, we'll also be joined by Andrew Hall Lacey uh, dissecting Ascot. Nicole Bradkey will join us to preview Wimbledon. Roy Ward to talk about the Opals and the Boomers fine tuning for their London preparations down at Hyacinth Arena a few hours ago. Stoney will pop by to uh, wrap up all the VFL action, all of that and a lot, lot more. So don't go anywhere.